Colonel Douglas McGregor, CEO for Our Country, Our Choice. And I'm here today with Dane Wigington, who's become a celebrity of sorts in his own field of geoengineering. He's a lead researcher at geoengineeringwatch.org. And we're going to ask him some questions in the next several segments uh, about what we've been witnessing in terms of weather and this whole question of weather manipulation. And he is the go-to person for answers. We wondered, Dane, if you wouldn't mind helping us to understand these northern lights. It, it really shocked large numbers of Americans around the world to see something really stunning like the northern lights over a place like New York City when we've become accustomed to seeing them only in the northern latitudes. Well, Colonel McGregor, we have so many factors in this equation now that are, are difficult to know with certainty what's affecting what at this point because so much damage has been done to the atmosphere and the capability of weapons of mass destruction, destruction like HARP in Alaska, the, their full capability is, is not completely known at this point. What we can say, if we back up about three months to the last large Aurora Borealis scenario, is it just a coincidence that about 10 days before that event, the Hart facility issued warnings to the FAA for aircraft to stay out of its airspace during the exact window of time when this major Borealis effect occurred? Is that just a coincidence? And when we know that Again, with the electrically charged layers of the atmosphere, like the ionosphere, when we know that a very small amount of input, which is HARP's 3.6 million watts that it can transmit into the ionosphere, and that sounds like a lot, but when we're talking about something as massive as the atmosphere, it's not a lot. And the chain reaction it causes, though, makes it into a very significant impact. And if we look at, for example, the how thick is the atmosphere? The atmosphere is about as thick as a layer of paint on a basketball. So people don't realize this thin layer is what allows us to exist on this planet. And when you treat it like a physics lab, blasting it with microwave frequencies from not just heart, but other ionosphere heaters around the globe, how close are we to chain reactions that we can't know or understand fully what will happen? So Again, well, let me just this, for a second and, and just point yeah. out that uh, HARP means High Altitude uh, Aurora active. Research Project, right? High Altitude Active Aurora Research Program, yeah. Active Aurora Research Program. And this this was, at least in official terms, terminated, was it not, in 2015? Smoke and mirrors. Complete smoke, smoke and, and mirrors. mirrors. Geoengineeringwatch.org stated that on the record at the time, that they had no intention of... of decommissioning that facility or even some media claim they were going to bulldoze it out of existence. And we knew that was absolutely not going to happen. All sleight of hand made a lot of media with that uh, attempt to divert attention from this facility. It's a weapon of mass destruction, period. Well, let, let's stop for a second then and understand that the HARP uh, capability has, has to be seen as somehow or another connected to these Northern Lights. Are there other reasons why this would have happened that you could tell us? Well, again, when you cause that kind of chain reaction in an already damaged atmosphere, and I want to stress that point, Colonel McGregor, the atmosphere is horrifically damaged at this point. We can't know the full extent of that damage, but we do know that we're getting UVC radiation on the surface. So as they increasingly poke and prod the atmosphere with these frequency transmissions, what is the downstream effect of that? And for those that don't know what UVC is, in the UV spectrum, we have UVA, UVB, UVC, and then X-ray. With a fully functional ozone layer, we are told that 95% of incoming UV radiation is UVA, 5% UVB, and we're told UVC stops 100,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Again, that's a DNA damaging spectrum of radiation. That Spectrum is used to sterilize labs, Colonel McGregor. So obviously we don't want to immerse ourselves in it. We now right. know with certainty that we're getting UVC in the surface. That's indicative of a very damaged atmosphere, ozone layer in, in particular. And when we have official agencies only metering for half of the UVB spectrum and none of the UVC spectrum, how can you possibly report what you're not even looking for? And that's the way the, the entire system is designed this way. So if we had no other challenges, Colonel McGregor, nothing, no other 
converging catastrophes of imploding biosphere, contaminated everything, global conflict. If we had no other challenges but the imploding ozone layer, that by itself is an extremely near-term existential threat. And Colonel McGregor, you've you've seen the various media reports that the ozone layer is getting better now, right? You've seen those reports. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely repaired. Yeah, absolute lie. And we, we encourage people to pay attention to their God-given sense of feel and reason. You can feel the sun burning you, burning your skin, and, and the thermal energy buildup from this now intense UV radiation. Colonel McGregor, you might have seen on some of the Weather Channel programs or news programs how many people are dying in, in cars, locked in cars, whether it's children or pets, or because people are caught off guard now because those vehicle interiors heat up so incredibly fast because of this very penetrating UV radiation, which by the way is also killing plankton, insects, heating water bodies extraordinarily quickly, the surface layer of the water body. So uh, at this point, those in power, I would argue Colonel McGregor, they know they can tell the public anything they want and far too many will ignore their sense of reason, their sense of feel, They'll simply buy into the official narrative because that feels better than facing the truth to too many people. And that needs to change. So the appearance of these northern lights over New York City should be viewed uh, with considerable alarm that this is something that's happening, at least in part because of the ozone uh, degradation. And also, you think, because of the ionization in the atmosphere from HARP. Absolutely. Well stated. And if we back this up further... The, the downstream consequences of the, for example, the nuclear experimentation in the atmosphere going back decades, Project Starfish Prime, Project Fishbowl, the, the detonation of hydrogen bombs in the magnetosphere, the repercussions of which we're still dealing with. Now let's add the frequency transitions, not just from HARP. HARP is one of perhaps as many as 100 of these type of ionosphere heaters around the globe. There are different designs and different outputs from these facilities. But what happens if you start to combine these signals and are they doing so already? And why would we think they're not? And now let's let's add this because this may be a factor again with the Aurora Borealis and the, the decimation of the atmosphere. We know that methane is building up in the atmosphere and it's not cow flatulence is again, another wedge they try to drive into society to throw out something so absurd that people mm. infight about that and ignore the oncoming train. We have massive methane expulsions from thawing methane hydrate and clathrate deposits in the Arctic. Again, on the Siberian tundra, I encourage your listeners to search Siberian methane craters. Look at the pictures. It will shock you to the marrow. That's happening on the seafloor as well on a scale 10 times bigger. So this methane is migrating into the atmosphere because it's lighter than air. It's covering the planet like a layer of glass. And now let's enter Project Lucy and Project Alamo. Those are acronyms, just like HARP. These programs are the power structure's insane attempt to degrade that methane by microwaving the atmosphere. Again, we're back to what could potentially be a, a, an additional causal factor with the type of phenomenon we're seeing like the Aurora Borealis. But their attempt with these two programs, Lucy and Alamo, are to blast this methane with opposing microwave frequencies in an, a desperate, dangerous, and unimaginably destructive attempt to degrade to molecularly degrade that methane. What are the consequences of doing that? We don't know. We have no way of knowing. So again, well, at this Jane, point- Jane, we want to we, we wanna go back to HARP and we want to cover some of these issues in the next segment. Uh, one of our viewers suggested that if flatulence were that much of a danger, Washington would have exploded long ago. So you're obviously uh, more right than the people in Washington. So right now, what I want to tell everybody is that this is very important information. It's not something you're going to find everywhere. And if you want to know more about this, you've really got to go and sign up for republic.us. And if you, you get an account on republic.us, you, you, you should use the following, republic.us and, of course, forward slash kernel. And if you go to that, you will find a, a page where you can actually get an account for $60 less than you would nor normally charge, be charged. Now, the thing that we have to keep in mind is this. Republic is a free speech platform. You want to know more about this? You've got to go on to Republic. But more important, when you go on to Republic, you can comment about this. You can express your opinion about what you're hearing. And finally, 
if you feel strongly enough about it, you can tag political figures in your community, all the way from the county sheriff up to uh, the president of the United States. So go look at uh, republic.us and get into this fight, because I have the feeling that what Dane is talking about is going to plague us for many years to come. We'll see you in the next segment on HARP. Thanks. Thanks.